Praise God and welcome once again to Daily Manor. We have been blessed to be studying all week uh, God's Word and we have had a joy as we completed chapter number three and we have stepped over into chapter number four and it's been a joy to journey with you in this context as Paul is weaving together his conversation regarding how the church should not be divided but how the church ought to be unified. And so we begin by looking at verse number one, and we're going to end at verse five today of chapter number four as we continue in our study of God's word. So then people ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Mm. I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court indeed. I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear. But what does but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in the darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. At that time, each will receive his praise from God. Wow. I need you to start hearing where Paul is. And so I want you to hear from my heart where Paul is in this, this conversation. In Corinth, people were even challenging the legitimacy of Paul's apostleship. They were calling into question whether or not he should be even revered or respected as a messenger of Jesus Christ. So some of the people who were following Apollos and some that were following Cephas found it necessary to try to downplay Paul's legitimacy. And Paul takes the time to come back to have a conversation with them and say, hey, I'm just a servant. I don't have to have a title. <laughs> I don't have to have a rank and file. Uh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm satisfied, I'm grateful to have the chance to be a servant. And as a servant, I know that I'm working for Christ. And God has been gracious enough to put some confidence in me because God has entrusted me with some secret things. Remember, he's tying this thing together. If you go back, and back up a little bit inside for our former chapter. Remember, the only way that I can come to know the mind of God is through the spirit. And he talks about the fact that there are things that God hides, which means that only people who are spiritually minded that the spirit of God speaks to and through are able to behold that which are the secret things of God, that God reveals, that God shows, that God enlightens, that God gives epiphanies, that God gives revelations, that God gives understanding. He does that so that people might mature and grow. That's what he does. And Paul says, I am one who he has given that to. And let, guess what? He gave it to me because I've been faithful. Wow. In essence, I've been faithful to declare the message, faithful with the message. I have not not told the message. You know, one of the things that I have vowed to do all of my life is to not try to sway people to accept the gospel that's mine, but rather to accept the gospel that is. That's a difference. When people try their best to make the gospel fit them, or you fit the gospel. In essence, you can't do both. You either go fit the gospel or you're gonna make the gospel fit you. And too many times we twist the word for it to be palatable to us. So we ask the word to conform to our lifestyles instead of us conforming our lifestyles to the word. And when we do that, we run into conflict. We run into jeopardy. We run into problems. Paul said, I have been faithful. Then Paul has, a, has the ability to say, now, I'm not saying, if you read his words carefully, he, he, I, I'm, not, I'm not all that because based on human standards, I can might be judged, but y'all ain't really my judge because the only person who can judge me is God. 
the person who judges my actions, the person who judges my behavior. He's the one that judges all things. He judges the intentions of humans' hearts. God is determining whether what was the reason for you doing what you're doing. Remember, God always, can. there can be an action done, but God evaluates the reason behind the action. Because the reason behind the action is what God pays attention to. Take your mind back to the Bible when David was chosen uh, as king. And when Eliab stood before Samuel and Samuel looked at Eliab and based upon his stature and his appearance, he said, here stands the Lord's anointed. And it was God that spoke to him and said, no, I do not judge or I do not critique, nor do I weigh a person based on human standards. Human standards judge, weigh, evaluate, determine a person's worth based upon outer appearance. God says, I look at them from their heart. If you read throughout the Old Testament, God discusses over and over again the judgment of one's heart, the judgment of one's intentions, the judgment of one's innate purpose, the reason for, the justification, by which reason they are doing what they're doing. God says, I'm evaluating what, for what reason you are behaving the way you are behaving. And that is what drives God's judgment. And Paul said, here are people trying to make a determination as to whether or not the message I give is relevant based solely upon their perception of who I am. They don't know me. They ain't got no uh, information about my totality. They don't have all that about my experience, but they're making judgment calls. And in them making the judgment calls, they have already behaved as if I am not fit for this task. And Paul says, no, no, no. You can't do that. You can't do that to me. The only person that judges me is God and God will judge the intentions of my heart. God will judge the reasons why I did what I did. May I ask you to take away the day to put down your spectacles of critique of someone's actions and let God manage it. Let today be the day you say, I'm allow the wheat and the tare to grow up together. And in the day of harvest, I'm gonna allow God to do the separation. If you let God do it, I know that God will make it all right. Once again, I love you. I thank you for your time. I pray you've been blessed by our sharing together. And I look forward to our coming together tomorrow. Until then, God bless.